Ever wonder why you keep dying in every fight in your favorite FPS games? Want to stop being the worst in your squad? Ever want to stop receiving trash talk from your friends? Do you want your aim to look less like this and more like this? Then look no further than Kovacs FPS Aim Trainer, your one-stop shop for all things aim. With over a hundred different scenarios to choose from, you can be sure to never miss a shot a- If you have played an FPS game competitively at least once, you've probably come across many videos about aim trainers, leading you to asking yourself how much these aim trainers actually improve your aim and if they are worth your time and your money. I myself even asked these questions while aim training myself in the past, which led me to feel like I was wasting my time, ultimately stopping my aim training routine altogether. So why am I here at aim training today? Well, I'm an ex top tier 3 and top 500 flex support player in Overwatch, meaning I play Play characters like Ana, Baptiste, Zenyatta, and more. While these characters require consistent aim in order to get the max value out of their kits, I can't help but fear that my aim will not be consistent enough to compete in the next game I choose to move on to. Aim trainers seem to be made to improve your aim, however, upon watching videos about the effects of aim trainers, it is really hard to tell if creators are hopping on to clout farm or if the experiment was actually done with the intent to help. I feel as though many others also feel the way I do, so I want to take it upon myself to go through a scientific experiment, guided by the scientific method, to show you guys the possible valuable results results of aim training and the realistic results that will come from the process. So it is time to answer the question, does aim training really improve your aim, and if so, how much? Doing research before you commence an experiment is fundamental to the success of the operation. Obviously, watching creators on YouTube is easily accessible for public knowledge, but I have more resources than the common FPS player. By utilizing my previous semi-professional background in the scene, I was able to converse with multiple hitscan players within the Overwatch scene to ask questions about the legitimacy of aim training. Among these players include conversing with a previous teammate and current contenders player for Wisp GG's, Rocket. Many of you know him for his crazy consistent tracer, but I know him for his incredible consistency with aim training both on Kovacs and in-game. Viewing his Kovacs stats sheets and watching his performance in high-level scrims was a clear indication that hard work can do wonders for your aim. This brings me to constructing our hypothesis which is as stated. Performing aim routines daily will result in noticeable consistency in mouse control. Now I am not the best aimer by any means, so I didn't know how to test my aim in unique ways. Going into the experiment, I knew that I was much more proficient at tracking modules as compared to clicking and flicking modules. However, I am not you and you are not me. Everyone is proficient at some aspect of their aim and struggle with another aspect. Because of this, I posted on Twitter for other players to join me in performing the experiment. These players include myself, GLD, EMF, and Vex. GLD and Vex ended up dropping out of the experiment for unique reasons that will be covered when it is more appropriate. Instead of introducing each and every one of these players in their individual skill sets, I have and will provide links in the description to many different documents including bios, graphs, observations, and notes that I urge you to view throughout the video as well as in your own research if you choose to do so in the future. It is important to note that throughout the experiment all of the subjects used Kovacs FPS Aim Trainer as it is widely utilized within the Overwatch Path to Pro community. It is currently on sale for $8 through the Winter Steam event, which is two US dollars down from the usual 10. This might be worth a buy. So what scenarios are we going to use in this experiment? As I stated previously, I am by no means an aim master. So I asked Rocket to create a routine that would not only help me with my problems of flick to track, but generalistic aim as well. To my surprise, the curriculum he gave me was not as simple as the routines commonly used for other experiments. In other videos, scenarios Scenarios like Kata IC Short and Long Strafe, as well as a variety of one wall X targets, are extremely common. So I was excited to see all of the variety that was added. Instead of training on four scenarios for an extended period of time, Rocket rather sent me two playlists to use for 15 days each, with the second playlist being significantly more difficult than the first. He specifically stated to not use the same scenarios and that variety is key. The first playlist had these custom made scenarios as listed on the Google sheet found in the description and are as follows. The second has these custom made scenarios and are listed on a separate Google sheet and are as follows. 
After collecting data, averaging the values of each day together to measure the percentage of improvement per day is a great way of observing improvement. But is that the only way? No. We want to see how our aim and mouse control transfer from Kovacs over to Overwatch, Apex, and other FPS games. So that's exactly what happened. The only problem is that it is incredibly difficult to actually prove that Kovacs has been helpful in an FPS game as there are many different factors that go into whether you are hitting or missing your shots. This could range from them having bulkier characters in a game like Overwatch to playing against a tap strafing god in Apex. Unless you are playing tap strafing nonsense every single game, your accuracy is going to vary quite a bit. Thus, improvement in game is going to have to be eyeballed, which is why the observation sheets are going to be crucial for this part of the experiment. A game of Cassidy and Tracer in Quick Play is all that is needed for noticing growth. Since the experiment is for 30 days, five sessions will be recorded for each player, and their observations will be recorded. The first session was recorded before any aim training without warm up, and the remaining four that were recorded are after performing the aim training routine for that day. Upon looking at the data, it is clear that improvement was made in all areas of aim. For example, improvement on Pokeball Frenzy Auto TE was by 11.67% for myself and 10.87% for EMF respectively after only two weeks. This trend continued for other exercises, including ones that trained clicking, tracking, and flicking. It is important to understand that each of these exercises had diminishing returns over the course of a month, especially within the first few days. This could be attributed to players' learning the exercises, and then actually practicing and improving their raw aim. This can be observed through every exercise where improvement over time goes from that 11.67% value down to a 5.3 increase overall. So let's take a look back at that hypothesis and original question and analyze how it matches up against the results. Did Kovacs really improve our aim? Absolutely. How much is a little bit harder to prove? Kovacs definitely helps your raw aim and how comfortable you feel holding your mouse, but it is important to note that scenarios have consistent hitboxes with similar movement patterns. Therefore, in games like Overwatch, grinding Kovacs will not have as big of an impact as opposed to games like Warzone and Apex Legends that have much more consistent hitboxes. This is why improvement was much easier to notice in the Apex experiments I had done in the past. In Overwatch, I felt much more consistent with my aim, but it is difficult to measure performance in Overwatch, especially with how maps can drastically change the team compositions both teams play, affecting the hitboxes you are shooting and even the characters you are playing. At the end of the day, however, Kovacs will help your aim become more consistent at the very least. A 5% change is no joke either. Hitting 5% more shots can be the difference between a winning kill or a death that leads to a crushing defeat. Because the hitboxes are different though, it is important that you do not only use Kovacs. Training within your game of choice is essential to maximizing your improvement, especially in games like Overwatch where hitboxes and movement vary. A Kovacs warm-up into a few minutes of code vac will do a lot for your aim in the long run if you can stay consistent. That being said, this experiment was sort of a trial run for these types of videos for me. This was conducted in the summertime, but for Christmas I received a new Model O wireless and decided to create this video. Within the coming weeks, I will be reaching out to more pros within the Overwatch community to do an experiment with a much more structured approach to measure individual improvement within Overwatch as a sort of follow-up. This next experiment will be a lot more organized and have fewer players participating to keep measuring results simple. The next video will probably be more along the lines of measuring how much a routine can do for your aim percentage wise in a week rather than just answering the question of whether it does or not. If you are interested in this idea or just want updates on the process, feel free to reach out to me via Discord. This also goes for if you are interested in using the playlist I have used in the video. I highly recommend using these playlists as they were personally crafted by Pyro and Rocket together. The link to the Discord will be provided in the description. Description. Huge shout out again to Rocket, Pyro, EMF, and everyone else that helped me with this experiment. I wouldn't be able to teach you all about AIM if I hadn't had the help of these amazing people. Do check them out on Twitter as their links will be posted below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss the follow up to be released in about a week or two. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, but until next time, I've got a peace out and paz out. I'll see you in the next one.